Hi class, so um, before I talk about the code and everything you're seeing here, I'm just going to show you this magnet on a stick or a magnet on a screwdriver and I'm going to wave it around this uh, the motion sensor that you all have and I think you can see what's going on and that it is pretty cool. Yes, okay, very cool. Um, so I'm tracking, I'm able to track the, the angle here, the location of the magnet around the um, magnetometer and I can also track how close it is. Um, if you look at this the mag, um, mag Z here, the z-axis can tell you how far near or far the the magnet is from the sensor. So um, let's go ahead and uh, dig into the code and, and see how this is working. I think you should uh, recognize that there are a lot of really cool possibilities here for building interfaces that are decoupled or like some you know part of the interface is decoupled from any electrical or mechanical components. So I'm imagining like a 3D printed, you know, globe or sphere that's like floating in water, some kind of liquid, and you can track um, somebody manipulating it. I think that would be kind of exciting. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and look at the code. Um, take a look at the Arduino code here. Uh, you've all seen the, the motion sensor code. I, I talked about this, I think, in week four. Um, and so you, you've seen a more elaborate version of this code, but this has been reduced to just the magnetometer. Um, okay, so the motion sensor has three instruments built in, right? Um, it's got an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. Traditionally, the magnetometer is used to, uh, uh, to give you some orientation data so that you can know how the motion sensor is positioned with respect to the Earth's magnetic field. Um, if you do some fancy integration algorithms, you can get really precise uh, orientation data when you in include the accelerometer and the gyroscope. But here we're using it for a very non-traditional purpose, which is just to track the position of a magnet, a strong magnet.